What's up, everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. And today is the long awaited back nine of the Southeastern Spring Swing Spring Break Golf Vlog Series, episode two of 2024 at Crow Creek Golf Club in Calabash, North Carolina. If you guys remember from the front nine, which I posted a little too over two weeks ago. And I do apologize, it's taken me this long to get around to making it through the back, editing it, putting it together, and getting it YouTube ready. I've had some changes going on with uh, my internship a little bit. Um, I'm actually working at a facility back in Michigan now. And uh, just uh, the whole process of that was a little bit squirrely at times. And uh, overall, though, I'm doing better. To start. And you can say that again for my golf game here, guys, on this back nine. Had a really, really nice trend going into this back half of the course, I course today. I was five over through, no, excuse me, I was four over through the first four holes on the front nine, and I end up finishing the last five holes in one over, five through nine on the front to salvage a respectable 41 in some pretty tough conditions. And we have a chance here to pull even better pace to plus I four. No, that. that is just, wow. That's, that's terrible there. I cannot be missing ones that yeah, short. That wasn't a great stroke. Yeah. And as you heard of that commentary gotcha. from the European tour, I got that from a how Tong Lee highlight. Um, Really good player on the European tour, by the way. Um, just plain and simple was a terrible swing, terrible stroke with the putter. So definitely a little shaken up after that miss with that putt. Tried to get a little too aggressive with this drive. Didn't hit it very well. Barely got over the water, honestly. But luckily, it's the shortest par four on the entire course. So I still only have a nine iron in. Just up the hill, about 130 yards. This pin was in a pretty tough position for it being a front pin. This green kind of has two tiers, and it goes side to side. The left side of the green is much higher than the right side. And I overdraw this one a little bit. And as you see, we have got a tough as nails lag putt coming up here. About 35 feet swinging hard from left to right. As you know, that is the putt I struggle with the most. Just missed a very short left to righter on the last hole. So over this putt, I was thinking, oh, boy, this is an important one. I got to make sure to put this close. Yeah, that's hard to do because once it gets on, it's going Not downhill. give two away. This is great. Get out of town. What a shot there. Looking like a potential bogey to almost not to get in for birdie. So, as you see there, just the look on my face, the big sigh of relief knowing that I'm just keeping pace. Back-to-back -back pars now on these first two holes on the back nine. Plus five through 11 now. Need to go plus two or better through the last seven. Completely doable. Just had a seven-hole stretch where I went one over. I just need to do that again was my mentality. I did it once. I can, did it, I can do it again. So... Off to this 12th hole here, a par five, 560 odd yards, a mammoth one. Water all the way down the right, out of bounds down the left. It doesn't really come into play on the drive, but the second shot and the third shot, there's out of bounds that comes in pretty close. So three wood here from the edge of the fairway. Wasn't an amazing lie for a three wood. Probably a mistake pulling this club. Yeah. Yeah. In the back of my mind, I could see that as a major possibility, but I didn't uh, listen to myself, and I did it anyway, and look what over. I need the happens, guys. Just a god-awful chunk, only 80 yards. And now I've got this, this impossibly hard so fairway bunker shot from just this wet, clay-like sand over water into the wind 205 with a four iron just a I can do this 
I can handle this. Ridiculously hard shot. Like if I it's all part just of keeping the plan. this one dry, just carrying the water on this shot is an achievement, guys. It really is. And um, I tell you what, I didn't know whether or not I could take relief from that bunker. You know, with how much water was in it, it was like quicksand almost. You can see like there's kind of a reflection on top of the sand a little bit. And that's because of that standing water. But I tried to push through it. And I failed absolutely miserably. Dad, to this day, ball. as I'm recording this voiceover, probably one of the worst shots of the year right there. And he just duffed it. I... I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. That... that... Back nine nerves. Back nine nerves. Well, his mind must be racing at the moment, mustn't it? What am I doing? What have I done? I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm throwing away any possibility of breaking 80 if I'm just going to have a blow-up hole that bad. That's exactly what I'm doing. But then I step up this wedge shot. This is my fifth shot after the penalty. And boy, oh boy, I steal one right there. All right. All right. All right. Only dropping to six over with a bogey. I tell you what, if there's such a thing as a great bogey, that's it. Because that was an amazing approach shot. Under pressure, knowing that um, just how much is at stake, being able to hit a shot like that and then making the putt after that as well. It was a little bit inside the one that I made on six on the front side that uh, was a really good putt that you guys saw so excellent excellent work there able to keep the tee shot dry as was dad and he takes a peek at it all right i mean look at that chip shot so he's gonna make par and that was actually his seventh straight par we were actually tied on this tee box as far as score goes obviously he was playing a tee ahead of me but still, he was having a really, really solid round. And had that gone in, being five over through two, through 13, I think that would have been territory for a really, really solid round if that chip shot went in. And boy, oh boy. Both me and Dad took a peek at it. Um, unfortunately, mine runs out quite a bit. Got this, like, 12, 13-footer coming back, breaking right to left about the same amount of break as the one that i made on six as i was just standing over this putt i was like yeah i've seen this before i'm comfortable with this oh, so well oh, that, is that was never gonna oh, miss sensational. what a time to do that Tony, unbelievable what golf can give you eh when all the chips are down you're out of it you think oh my goodness the world's against me and all of a sudden you go and hold it and you're back to square one. Two straight holes, stealing one. Just stealing a shot on those last two holes to stay at six over. I mean, that goes to up and down saves on 12 and 13 right there, guys. Those could go down if I am able to successfully get in with a 70s round. Those are the two shots that are going to go down as the reason why this history setting round happened remember guys one of my golf accomplishments that i have yet to fulfill is breaking 80 oh, outside of the, the right state number. of michigan and that okay. approach shot right there is not going to hurt our chances that's for sure i've scored 80 on the nose on four separate occasions in four different states Georgia, Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. And today could be the day in North Carolina where I finally break through. And as you see there, I believe this is stroke hole two. This number 14, 447 yard par four that I absolutely cranked my drive on. Yeah, Mr. Bigford's little mini lesson with me was really working quite well. And then I have an eight iron into it. I mean, that was just about as well played of a hole as you could ask for right there. On a, with it being as tough of a hole as it was. Just a fairway almost green. 
super easy chip par um, close to a fairway green two putt par is what i'm trying to analogize anyway um that's just making as short work of it as i did on a hole that tough was really really nice to see so into 15 now 15 a little bit shorter 395 yards i did not hit this drive well though still had about 170 yards in took a seven iron i had no idea why i thought that would be enough club but in my mind i had just seen my dad go long of the green and he had this chip shot that was super downhill and almost impossible to stop it seemed so at least from what it looked like to us on the fairway so i just thought in the back of my head i should probably go with the shorter of the two clubs that i'm deciding between struck it nicely Even though I played it smart and missed short of the green, I still had a ridiculously tough chip there. And that pin is just right on the edge of that ridge. And for me to just play it as perfectly as I did to get up the ridge but not have a putt back toward it for the next one was just huge. So we're standing over this one about seven feet again, moving right to left. So I was decently comfortable over this i felt like this should be in this should be no issue so take it back just enough of a push to miss there wasn't the worst stroke ever was definitely a better stroke than the one on 10 where i missed but not better enough apparently so that's okay going to seven over now and as you can see just the way I'm conducting myself, just trying to calm myself down, just be like, that's fine. It's not ideal, but you're still in good shape. You know exactly what you're doing. This whole round, after the first few holes, you have been rock solid. There's no reason to be worried. All I need to do is hang on, and I got this. And on the one par three of the day that doesn't have water on it, not able to take advantage and get on this green pulling it into the bunker that shot needed to hold on i was just talking about needing to hold on the rest of the day and that one just couldn't quite do it for me so in the bunker relatively long bunker shot here with a lot of green to work with so definitely a lot of parts to that equation there just uh kind of that distance you're not familiar with uh kind of that consistency of the sand because it rained earlier where you can't really tell how it's going to come out you know has it been dry long enough to where i can try to play like a dry sand shot or is that not going to work is my club not going to get deep enough is am i going to skull it you know because that's obviously the worst feeling in golf is just not knowing how to deal with a wet bunker and um i've been getting better at it definitely and as you saw there that bunker shot did come out quite wet so dealt with it okay i mean this is a result that i know a lot of people my skill level would take so off to the par putt about 16 feet takes another peak just like last hole but not quite enough missing just barely right on the last hole and barely left on this one just trying to hold it together as much as I can and just feeling the pressure. Just, I wouldn't say I'm crumbling. I wouldn't say I'm collapsing, but I'm definitely not making it easy on myself. And this is going to be a tenuous, tenuous finish with these last two holes. Need to birdie one of them. But the 18th is a par 5 of about 5.30. There's water on the tee shot, but it doesn't really come into play as long as you don't really miss hit it. Um, so that's really the only trouble on that hole. So I'm just thinking as long as I can par this hole, birdieing this hole right now would be more than welcome. But if I can get through this hole with a par, I'm going to give myself a chance going into the 18th. And uh, if you told me that I'd have like a 15-foot putt for birdie on the 18th hole to shoot 79 after i was done on the fourth green i would have signed up right then and there 
I mean, this this round has been quite a extreme comeback. It really has. Um, these last 12 holes, I've been the same amount over par as I was the first four holes. So after a pretty poor approach shot with that pitching wedge, though, have a pretty difficult chip that Bermuda fairway very tough to deal with, and I almost played now. it perfectly. You can't be serious. Man, that would have been such a massive moment had I been able to drop that in. But we still got a little bit more work to do. We are going to need to get that birdie on the 18th. Almost was able to steal it there. And that's what this whole round is about, is just stealing shots down the stretch. It's been... I mean, this has honestly been one of the most entertaining rounds I've ever put on this channel, in my opinion. Wow, what a tee shot. Save two of his best wings off the tee for the last two holes. And as you see there, once again, every time today where I've needed to step up and hit a good shot, I've been able to do it. And so here we are, final approach, needing a birdie for the first ever 70s round outside of Michigan. Just thinking over this ball, one more nice crack out of the center of the bat and you'll be up there close with an up and down chance for this. He needs to step up and pick out a target and just rip it. Ball. That reaction says it all right there, running after it, like Robert Garrigus at the Hyundai Tournament of Champions. The reaction says it all. That was a good one. That was what we needed right there, right then. So as you see here, 60-yard shot left. It was a little longer than I wanted, but with how much it rained earlier, the fairways were still a little bit soft. So... Still had a decent amount of distance in a 60-yard wedge shot. Green with a big ridge that bisects it, that pin real close to it. And I end up finding myself on the wrong side of the ridge with a downhill sliding tickless, just nasty putt for this 79. I mean, this is one of the toughest... 20 footers I've ever had in my life it really is and just running through my mind the whole time as I was over this putt was the one that I missed that was just a little bit longer than this on the 18th at Knob North in Cohutta, Georgia last year just trying to avoid repeating what did I learn from then what have I improved on what can I implement right now and once I went through that checklist in my head, told myself, good stroke, good line, it'll go in, I took the putter back and made a good stroke. We were that close once again. I just couldn't believe it. I put one of the best strokes I've ever put on a putt and it just didn't drop. And that's how it ends. A 39. God, how bittersweet is that? How disgustingly bittersweet is that 39 and that 80 after that start? No three putts. No penalties off the tee. hit 8 out of 14 fairways. I mean, what can you be mad about on this card, to be honest? Y you can't be mad at this. You just can't. But it is what it is. It's not what I wanted, and that's another state where I hit that 80, but I don't break it. That's five states now that I've done that. Still looking for that first beautiful 70s round on a state outside of Michigan, and it just hasn't come yet. 
and I played my heart out today. I really did. And as much as I feel dejected right now and as much as I'm just looking back on this round and, um, I mean, I, I'm showing some serious emotions here in this voiceover just um, talking about it because I know how much it meant to me and especially after making one about that length at Boulder Creek um, that February, just the previous month, the being able to do that that early in the year to break 80 was just such an encouragement going into this round. And uh, I just had that same length of that putt for it on that 18th. And I felt so good over it, even though it was a left to rider. I put such a good stroke on it and it just didn't drop. And I think that's the takeaway is you just can't win them all. Sometimes golf just decides you lose. You know what I mean? And that's a very hurtful, very stinging feeling that is one of the very few drawbacks to being as invested in this game as I am. But mark my words, guys, we got another spring break round still to come. And it's another one where I gave myself a great chance, where I had a great score going. You guys are going to want to watch every moment of it because it is just going to go down in this channel's history as one of the best videos I've ever put out. I guarantee it. So just stay tuned, guys. Good news is coming soon with the golf game. I promise. This is Buffalo Ben 15 signing off. Have a good day, everyone.